Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Stuckey. I just graduated from the University of Washington uh, this past June in biochemistry and I'll be starting medical school here in the summer. So I'm fairly early in my training, but it is really nice to be here. And I'm very excited to continue to join the platelet party with all you. Um, so here is my project that I've been working on with my mentor, Alexander St. John who is an affiliate of Bloodworks Northwest, and also the Department of Emergency Medicine. So this is fairly preliminary data, but I think we're onto something pretty cool. So my project is investigating the effects of extracellular actin on platelet aggregation. So a little bit of background as to why we even went into this realm. So my mentor, Alex St. John, looks at trauma-induced coagulopathy, and he noticed that in trauma patients, there's a increase in actin and a decrease in gelsolin, its capping protein. So tissue damage from severe trauma can lead to a mass influx of actin into the blood, a cellular death. Actin is a super abundant protein. It's found in the cytoskeletal wall, in muscles, in platelets. Um, but once it enters the blood, it can form long filaments. It's globular and filamentous actin. And those filaments can get integrated into fibrin clots which is not so good because you might get some microvascular blockages. So we found, or we think, that excessive actin release is associated with platelet dysfunction. And then we started to think, oh, what about gelsolin, the scavenging protein of actin? Could we reverse the effects that we see in, act, or in clots um, with this protein? But the specific effects on platelet function is not known. So we investigated three different things. We did three sets of experiments, and we'll continue to, to do more. The first thing we did was investigate whether adding actin, human skeletal actin, to healthy donor whole blood would increase the platelet aggregometer response. So we added a saline control, or 200 nanomolar actin, and then chose two agonists to activate platelets with, both ADP and collagen. We also wanted to create a dose response curve to see if there's a saturating effect of actin, if there becomes a point where this effect is no longer present. And then our last thing to do was to see if we could reverse any effects by adding gelsolin. Adding actin first, then adding gelsolin. And then we did, uh, we, we compared the area under the curve, so more impedance is more platelet act, uh, activation on the platelet aggregometer. And then we did a pil uh, ta tailed, Paired t-test with significance at less than 0.05. So here's our results for that first experiment, the actin versus no actin condition, and, and above our sample aggregometry tracings. And we found that there was no significant uh, increase in aggregation response for ADP, but there was with collagen. And afterwards, we did the dose response that I described, and we seemed to find a saturating effect around 200 uh, nanomolars of actin. So that might be the sweet spot as we continue to add actin. We might just go for 200 nanomolar. Then for gel solen, um, RN is really low. So this is really preliminary work that we're doing. Um, we only had four repetitions with a p-value of 0 0.58. So not significant, um, but maybe a trend. Um, I don't want to overstate the results. But it could be interesting to continue to repeat this to see if we can find a statistically significant um, decrease in the effects of, that actin has. So re kind of building hemostasis by undoing the effects that actin has um, by the capping of the actin filaments. So in conclusion, we found that exogenous actin administration does increase platelet aggregation through the collagen pathway, but not the ADP pathway. And it's possible that gel solin could reverse these effects, but nothing statistically significant yet. And then maybe that extracellular actin from the cell death is what's kind of causing this. And then I had a picture of a platelet here and some of the surface receptors that uh, maybe that's where they're interacting. And then for uh, future directions is to continue to characterize this relationship. And then, you know, far away would be how can we integrate gel solen? Is there a gel solen supplement? Is there a way to make therapeutics for these trauma patients that suffer from trauma-induced coagulopathy? And then I added a graphic of gel solen coming like a lightning bolt and severing the actin filaments. So that's what, uh, that's what I've been up to. Um, I'd like to answer any questions to the best of my ability. Um, but again, this is very preliminary. And, but it was really nice to be able to tell you about the work I've been doing and supporting young trainees. I really appreciate it. Thank you.
thank you. Nice talk. I was just wondering if you're planning to use any other assays or ways to look at this interaction rather than aggregation. Yeah, um, we thinking about maybe uh, TEG or Rotem and then maybe actually using some of our in vivo rat models, like um, putting gel solon into the rats. So yeah, increasing our kind of ways that we're investigating this, because right now we've only done platelet aggregometry, and we use the Chronolog 700, and it can be a little bit finicky as well. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this um, pans out across different types of assays. Mm -hmm. Hi, great talk. Um, there's a lot of actin in platelets that's also released from activating platelets. Um, why do you think this is a trauma-specific mechanism and not something that platelets just do you know, like any other component that they would release and cause some feedback activation or structural interaction? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not totally sure if it is specific. Um, there was a paper that Ernest Moore published in, at Shock Trauma that found that there is an increase of actin more than usual in trauma patients compared to uh, healthy donors. So maybe it's not specific, but maybe the oversaturation of actin from trauma could lead to some of these effects. I'm not totally sure. Yeah, this is a, a great project. A lot of interesting things to look at here. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>